wines typically have a Burgund Burgundian nose, or the nose of that of a wine from Oregon. Oregon is the second microclimate to Burgundy uh, in the United States. And the wines have that kind of damp, wet rag, kind of cardboard kind of smell to them. So they're not very inviting on the bouquet, but on the palate, they're usually award-winning. Typically with fine wine, as it relates to Pinot, if it's not pleasant on the nose, it's typically pleasant on the palate. The wine's lightly oaked. Uh, it's not heavily oaked as well, and it's, it's got supreme balance. Um, this wine sees 12 months of French oak. 40% of that oak is new in the program, and they use the barrels two years in the program. So they offer a seasoned barrel. When they say two years, they mean that the barrel's in the program for two years, so the wine will have two years of basically penetrating the wood and thus pulling out the traits, the wood tans that you find in the wine. A seasoned barrel offers a little bit offers to the winemaker a little bit more range uh, and ability to um, stack the tannins properly and not have them be overpowering. So it's a nice wine. Typically, these wines are going to really show well with food by themselves. They're they're a gem, but they really um, get elevated and, and really magnified in, in a very positive way with, with um, the component of food. New Zealand has been doing wine for a long time, um, and, and typically they are known for Pinot Noir. Uh, they do some Grenache down there. They also do an obscure variety called Tarantas that we're going to evaluate in later videos, the uh, Argentina, which is a hybrid grape, um, and some Pinotage as well. A lot of cranberry for the fruit notes on this wine. Uh, we get dried strawberry going on here. Um, a little bit of straw, I would say. And then a little bit of a vegetative quality. Um, get a little bit of mushroom on that one. And it does have some earth on the nose as well, which is typical to the island. Uh, New Zealand is typically, uh, the island is, was a volcano. Um, so basically you, you've got uh, volcanic soil there, which is great for growing Cabernets. Uh, and really rich, deep, um, dynamic grapes. Pinot Noir, um, in certain areas uh, of the island where the hummus doesn't run too deep, um, it finds, uh, Pinot Noir finds a nice nice growth rate in, in those areas. But typically, um, not so much in the, in the strong volcanic soil. Great wine. Typically, you won't find these wines in the stores. As I said, fine wine bottle shops. Um, this wine retails for about $26 a bottle. Uh, it recently got 90 points in Wine Spectator. We work with a few uh, journals and publications here on wine videos. We typically uh, look at Wine Enthusiast, which focuses primarily towards restaurants. Uh, Stephen Tanzer writes an article that we, we, we like to get his stuff. And also Robert Parker. Wine Spectator, of course, but we don't focus so much. Wine, wine Spectator is more of a mainstream magazine. And we, and we find that they don't really critique or analyze the uh, small production boutique esoteric wines that we do at the wine video. It's just a nice wine. Great for summer too. Um, this is the grape going into summer. Uh, we're located in Arizona where it's uh, approaching 100 degrees and if you're going to indulge in red wine you definitely want a light red like a Gamay Beaujolais um, or possibly a nice Pinot Noir, Coastal Pinot or something from Oregon or New Zealand. Thanks for your time. Cheers. Cool. Is that all right? Yeah, it's great. And your uh, your camera is out of space. Out of space? Yeah, it must have had, must have had something on, the, on that car already. Oh. Well, that's good. We've got three cameras rolling, so if you want to just segue into another one. Okay. Uh, the only thing I would say, suggest is maybe um, try to look up more towards the camera. Okay. If, it, if, it's, if, it, if it's bothersome, then I'll move. Um, but it would really help a lot. Because uh, okay. you know, I can understand you're looking at the wine because that's what you do. Maybe try to hold the glass up or something like that. Because otherwise you tend to looking down the whole time. Okay. Yourself. Okay. Oh, and also, don't say um. Yeah. Try, to, try to avoid that. If you can, um, it's hard to do. I know from doing taking depositions, it's hard to say to avoid saying um. But it looks really good. And also, you know, I mean, it's good to be focused on, on the small, uh, small, uh, smaller wineries and stuff like that. But we should sort of uh, not necessarily limit ourselves to that. Okay. Point. Just because I mean, we, we want to get them, the consumer. Exactly. We, we, we want to get them all. Stuff. We yeah. want everybody, right? Yeah. Exactly. Right. So that, we, that includes the five, you know, two, two buck chuck people. Okay. In fact, we might even want to do one on two buck chuck. Yeah. yeah. You know, this next one, I want to talk about the range that we're going to do. Okay, cool, yeah.
Not too much. Chuck, but, but I mean, what, you know, whatever. I mean, some, yeah. we, we, want, we want to build with common man because the common man can send us $5 checks all day. You know? Yeah. Five, a million people sending us a $5 check would be fantastic. 